Greetings. Welcome to another last day events as they are being fulfilled very, very rapidly. I have a question and this was really a question that was brought to my attention a long time ago. And then today someone sent me a video that is dealing with the exact question. And that question was asked by uh, two Pastor Stephen Bohr. Let's begin here and listen to what he had to say. And then we're going to play some more clips and we're going to talk more about this. Listen carefully. And, uh, and so um, the answer to this question, I believe, uh, is uh, no. Uh, it's not wrong to have a funeral on Sabbath. No, it's not wrong to have funeral on the Sabbath. This was part of the answer that somebody asked a question, and that was part of the answer that Pastor Stephen Bohr gave to that individual. And there's going to be a whole lot more reasoning behind what he just said. And the question we would like to ask, is it biblical to have funeral on the Sabbath? To help answer this question, let's start from the beginning. But before we get into starting from the beginning, let's have a quick word of prayer. Loving Father God, which art in heaven, I pray that every man be a liar and your word be truth. Bless us now with the truth, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, now there's a reason why the book was called Exodus, because the children of Israel were in bondage in Egypt, which represents the world, which represents sin. God brought them out of sin, out of Egypt, out of the world, into himself. And the heart of the Ten Commandments, Exodus 20, verse 8, the Bible says to Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, nor thy son, nor thy daughters, nor thy maidservants, nor thy cattle, nor the strangers that is within thy gate. And he gave the reason in verse 11. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth and set it aside, rested on the Sabbath day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it and made it holy, which was an echo of what we also read in Genesis 2 verses 1, 2, and 3. The creation account, the seventh day of the week that God created, and within that day, He created nothing. And the Bible says, it is a day of rest from your labors. Again, the commandment says, six days thou shalt labor and do all thy works. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Emphasis again, you have six days to do whatever you need to do. But the seventh, it has been hallowed, meaning set aside, sanctified, set aside, holy. It is the Sabbath of the Lord. It is not the Jewish Sabbath. It is not my Sabbath. It is not your Sabbath, it is the Sabbath of the Lord, thy God. The Sabbath, here's another point before we move on. The Sabbath points to creation, to the creation account. Also, this is according to Genesis 31 and also Ezekiel chapter 20, beginning in verse 12. One more time, the Sabbath points to the creation account before sin entered the world. Also, the Sabbath is a sign, also a sign and points to God as the creator and the true God. Also, the Sabbath is a sign of redemption. So, those three examples of what the Sabbath reminds us of and a sign of, Biblically speaking, based on that alone, it is not a time, a day where we should be having funeral because that kills 
destroy purpose of the Sabbath. God did not say remember the Sabbath because of sin. God did not say remember the Sabbath to mourn on that day, but it is to celebrate creation, to honor God, to worship Him, and to remember the work of redemption that Christ did for you and I. So it is not a day that we should do our own things. So, but according to Pastor Stephen Paul and his colleague, we can use that day, we can have funeral on that day, for what reason? For the sake of witnessing to others. That's the excuse, brothers and sisters. Now, before I get into that, I would like for you to remember by way of review how Pastor Stephen Bohr, now this is an, not an attack on Pastor Stephen Bohr, this is just a disagreement here on what he himself has published on social media. Remember how Pastor Stephen Bohr, along with many others, Seven Adventist leaders use, should say, misuse the Bible and spirit of prophecy to entice us, to deceive us, to take the Babylonian poison. For example, when he said this. It might surprise many that Ellen White and her secretaries received the smallpox vaccine when there was an epidemic in her day. And in those days, of course, medical science was not nearly as advanced as it is today. Medical science was not nearly as advanced as it is today. Pastor Stephen Ball counseled us then to believe in the science and take the Babylonian poison. Believe in the science. Those men are using their own reasoning, their own imagination above what the Bible says. They are doing this to please many that is the reason for this and in the next clip by way of review he had also this to say in regard to ellen white and the poison evidently ellen white saw no contradiction between taking the vaccine and trusting in the protective power of god furthermore her rationale for taking the vaccine was altruistic her concern was for the well-being of her secretaries and others in the community. She took it, he said, for the sake of the community. The same way Mark Fenley, Elder Fenley, told us that we need to take it for the sake of the community. If we don't do so, we don't love our neighbor. And by the way, the Pope of Rome said the same thing. Now, fast forward to two, three days ago, as Pastor Stephen Bohr and his colleague were answering questions. And one of them was in regard to the Sabbath and funeral. Keep in mind, as we have produced two videos in the past few days showing how some pastors from other denominations are attacking the Sabbath and blaming Ellen White for teaching the keeping of the seventh day Sabbath. And then now we have one of our own saying, hey, it's okay to desecrate the Sabbath. Now, I don't want to sound insensitive because I myself have, have lost a loved one not too long ago. But the Bible is clear on this subject. It says six days you shall labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Listen again to what they went on to say. I don't see necessarily a, a mistake of attending a funeral service on the Sabbath day. As a matter of fact, I had to even conduct a couple of times of funeral services on a Sabbath mm -hmm. for, for, for being the only time that was possible for the family to do. So I don't see it's a mistake. And I think that I know that some people, like I said, might be afraid of breaking the Sabbath day for going to a funeral. But a funeral can be actually an opportunity to share the mm -hmm. blessed hope with those that are not of the faith, you know, for family members to know that you believe in the coming of Christ. So it can be an actual moment of testifying about 
who the Lord is and why we don't, we don't have to worry or to feel hopeless as we believe in the second coming of Christ. Desecrating the Sabbath, breaking the Sabbath, is a good opportunity to witness to the community, to witness to others. That's the justification, brothers and sisters. No, the commandment is very specific. It says you cannot do that on the Sabbath of the Lord. There's no justification for that. Again, Pastor Stephen Bona is going to take the rein and he's going to back up what his colleague just said. Listen carefully. Yeah, and it's very, very common to have memorial services on Sabbath. Right. Almost every memorial service that I've ever seen mm -hmm. is held on Sabbath. Right. You know, they don't have the casket there with a, with a person in it, but um, they have pictures, you know, of the person. They do a little bio on the screen and so on. Uh, so uh, nothing per se wrong with having a funeral service on Sabbath. Uh, nothing per se wrong with having a funeral service on Sabbath. Nothing is wrong with having a funeral service on the Sabbath. Now, this is men's reasoning or above what God says. This sounds very similar to what the Roman Catholic Church has said and tried to do against the word of God. It sounds very similar. That's men reasoning. And then again, this mantra, well, we can do it under the umbrella to witness. You know what that means, brothers and sisters? I mean, again, nothing against those two men personally, but this tells me, just like Christ says himself, you lay aside the commandments of God for the tradition of men. Men pleasers. That's pretty much what that is. Men pleasers. There's money in that as well to be gained. No, mourning cannot go together with uh, delight. Those are in position. You mourn when there is a funeral. Then therefore the Sabbath now, you are making it a day of mourning when it's supposed to be a day of rejoicing, a day to worship and praise God. Keep that in mind. This is a day to worship from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come and worship before me. Joyful. It's supposed to be that day. But when you turn or you start having funeral on that day, it can no longer be a day of rejoicing. It can no longer be a day of worship. Now, the attention now is on uh, the tragedy that took place is on the family instead of God uh, being at the center of it all. But the attention is on the family that is mourning and also the person that passed away. That is not what the Bible says we should be doing. Again, he's going to talk about that same mantra. It's a good opportunity to witness. Listen again. Uh, nothing per se wrong with having a funeral service on Sabbath. You can make a call to the family right. that have not committed their lives to the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a perfect time to do it because Absolutely. people see their, their mortality, right? The problem with that is, what does the commandment say? Remember, brothers and sisters, we are told that men shall, shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Not out of the mouth of the conference, out of the mouth of Stephen Moore. By every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's what we are told to do. Again, Jesus said in Matthew 5, for example, he said, think not that I have come to destroy the law, did not come to destroy, but to fulfill, tell you that till heaven and earth pass, not one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law until all be fulfilled. My Bible tells me Jesus would use the Sabbath to heal. I keep that point in mind. He would use the Sabbath to restore somebody from a disease, a problem, but never use the, the Sabbath to mourn. For example, Lazarus died. 
Did Jesus even go on the Sabbath to raise him up from the dead? No, that would take the attention not to the dead. No, brothers and sisters. He used the Sabbath as a day to bring healing, to rejoice. And those who received the healing were rejoicing now. Not mourning. Not mourning. It defeats the purpose of the Sabbath when you do that because it says it's supposed to be a day of rejoicing, a day that we delight in the Lord. Again, let's listen to the word of this man above the word of God. Listen. And, uh, and so um, the answer to this question, I believe, uh, is uh, no. Uh, it's not wrong to have a funeral on Sabbath. Uh, there are other things that uh, would be wrong. The question does not uh, ask about uh, weddings on Sabbath. So Stephen Bohr is interpreting the Bible his own ways. He is determining or trying to determine what he believes is wrong and not wrong. Well, I would rather go by what God says, not what you determine is wrong and not wrong. Again, he's going to go even further than that, another step further than that. Not only, he's, he, as he already said, that you can do, there's nothing wrong to have funeral on Sabbath, but he's even going to suggest that simple weddings can also be done on the Sabbath. Simple weddings, as he puts it. <laughs> simple. Listen now. Uh, there are other things that uh, would be wrong. The question does not uh, ask about uh, weddings on Sabbath. You know, if you have a simple wedding where you declare them man and wife, that's one thing. But with a wedding, you have all kinds of preparations. You have the dressing up and you have, you know, the putting on the makeup. If uh, the people use the makeup and, you know, they have to prepare for the reception. And there's just a lot of things that are not uh, Sabbath activities. But funeral, I don't see any issue. So Stephen Boy is making the new rules now. You can have simple weddings on the Sabbath, but if it's an extra again, uh, wedding, if you're gonna go into keep making a bunch of preparation, having a party, makeups, if, you, if you're gonna include all that, yeah, no, you cannot do that wedding on the Sabbath. But if it's a simple wedding, but even that, there's something wrong with this simple wedding. Because again, that takes the focus away from God into the person or persons that are getting married. No, it's not a day to have funeral services. It's not a day to have quote unquote simple or big wedding. It's not a day as well to have intercourse with your wife or your husband because that is a day that has been set aside by God as a holy purpose, as a holy use to remember Him as our Creator, to remember Him as our re Redemptor, Savior, but also to glorify His name, to worship Him, to come together, to congregate, to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Now, Stephen Bohr, is going to go a step further to twist the Bible. He realized that Christ died on the cross before the Sabbath came and was buried before the Sabbath, Sabbath, uh, the Sabbath came. Then he's going to say, well, that case was different because he needed uh, to rest before the Sabbath came and so on and so forth. But he forgot what what the rest of the Bible says in regard to that, that the women who came to prepare his body for, for burial, they stopped as they saw the Sabbath draw on, they stopped because of the commandment, the fourth commandment, because the Sabbath was coming. Listen carefully again to how he's going to twist that. I think in the case of Christ, uh, you know, being buried before the Sabbath, um, I think that case is perhaps unique uh, because uh, Jesus had to rest in the tomb every single minute of the Sabbath because he was resting from his works of redemption. You know, on the cross, he said, it is finished. He died. 
And then he was buried shortly before sundown. Right. Because he had to rest in the tomb 24 hours like he had done at creation. Right. But, uh, you know, with human beings, there's not that particular need. Right. Because, uh, you know, we're not redeemers. <laughs> right. No. <laughs> so, um, so I think in the case of Christ, it's perhaps a little different than, uh, than generally everybody else. Absolutely. In the book of Luke, chapter 23, this is the part Stephen Bohr did not mention here. In the book of Luke, chapter 23, if you want to look that up, and let's read, for example, from verse 52. Luke, chapter 23, verse 52. Again, forgetting exactly what the Bible says in regard to, to the Sabbath. Remember, Jesus was on the cross and then he died on the cross in a sh very short time. Joseph of Arimathea went to Pilate, asked for the body of, of Jesus for burial. Pilate was shocked to find out that he was already dead. Wanted to make sure that he was really dead. He sent soldiers and they spear, uh, 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 they, they, they stabbed him on the side with the spear and then water and blood oh well oh, i should say uh water and blood rushed out from his side and showing that he was indeed dead and then they brought him down and the woman the women the bible says in luke chapter 50 uh 23 verse 52 this man went unto pilate and begged the body of jesus and he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never man before was laid. And that day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew on. And the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the what? To the commandment. So the women rested the sabbath day according to the commandment what were they doing before they were preparing his body for burial but the sabbath was coming they knew that that would be breaking the sabbath to have a funeral on the sabbath to have a burial on the sabbath to finish preparing his body for on the sabbath but yet stephen bohr tell us something completely different while the bible says this for example in isaiah 58 13 and 14 if thou turn away thy foot from the sabbath from doing thy pleasure on my holy day and call the sabbath a what what is the sabbath it's supposed to be a delight now a delight is the opposite of mourning it is his sabbath and god says you should find pleasure in it and delight can we really find pleasure and delight at a funeral where people are mourning let's continue the holy of the lord honorable and shall honor him not doing thine own ways nor finding thine own pleasure nor speaking thine own words not even your own words is not allowed to be spoken on the sabbath it goes on to say, Then shalt thou delight, there's the word delight again, thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. The Sabbath is supposed to be a delight. In Isaiah 56, God says the same thing as well. Why then are we teaching those things? Why this creeping compromise? Men's pleasers. Spirit of prophecy mention how the Sabbath will be seen from among our ranks as something that, that will be lightly regarded. As we read from Selected Messages, volume 1, 204. The enemy of souls, that is Satan, who is the enemy of souls, has sought to bring in the supposition that a great reformation was to take place among seven Adventists. And that this reformation would consist in giving up the doctrines which stand as the pillars of our faith and engaging in a process of reorganization. And then she says the Sabbath, of course, 
would be lightly regarded as also the God who created it. Indeed, the Sabbath has been lightly regarded because now we're having funeral on the Sabbath. We have Adventist churches that are having Super Bowl parties on the Sabbath. We have Adventist universities, colleges that are playing basketball on the Sabbath. All kinds of creeping compromise. But my Bible tells me, even, uh, for example, in Isaiah chapter 56, even the strangers, as it says in verse 7, even them will I bring to my holy mountain. This is based on the Sabbath commandment and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar for mine house shall be called in house of prayer for all, all people. This was in the context of the Sabbath. My house shall be called a house of praise, a house of prayer, not a house of mourning. Remember also, and I leave you with this. The Bible says, the dead know not anything. And also it says, the dead do not praise the Lord. While we are mourning at a funeral, we cannot really praise the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer. Loving Father God, which art in heaven, help us, Father, as many winds of doctrines are blowing all around us. And on the surface, it sounds pretty good, but help us to remember, as Jesus again said, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen.